All right, I have all green lights, so I am going to unmute you right now, Marco. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Catching Up with Jacob. And this time, Jacob's not in England. He's not on the Atlantic side. He's on the Pacific side, literally skipped right over us and went all the way to Hawaii. Jacob, good morning. How are you today? Um, hanging in there in Jesus, praise the Lord. Speaking uh, tomorrow at uh, Upcountry Christian Fellowship, Grace Church in Maui. Looking forward to joining you in Los Angeles next weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, San Bernardino, yes. Yeah, you got uh, <clears throat> to disappoint you after being in Hawaii. I think it's be a big let yes, down. Right. That's right. <laughs> but somebody has to suffer for the Lord. Somebody's so. got to do it. Um, yes. <laughs> well, Jacob, I used to say good evening. Now I say good morning. Uh, good how morning. are you feeling? A lot of people are always concerned about your health. How you doing? It must be getting a little tiresome to hear it all the time. But people do really care. Your concern is much appreciated. Uh, my edema is not very good at the moment. Uh, so yeah, prayers appreciated. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, thank God you're there with David. So, uh, he's always taking care of you. Yeah. So praise God for that. And, uh, um, you know, much blessings and many blessings to the church that's hosting you there. Uh, how did the meetings go in New York and Baltimore? Meetings went very well in New York and in Baltimore. Thank God. The Lord was present in both meetings. And, uh, I, again, hope we will be able to plant the church in Baltimore which will basically be a plant of the open church of the open door in, in Manhattan and New York, but we're hoping I'm planting a church of the open door or some other such name that will be a daughter church of the open door in Baltimore. Baltimore is a very needy city. Yeah. It, it, it's been uh, at the epicenter of a lot of the violence, a lot of the economic yeah. downturn and uh, the, the need for the gospel is tremendously there. So it's. Uh, I'll it's tell you, Mark, I was in Los Angeles day before yesterday. And I was in Los Angeles less than three months ago. And even in the last less than three months' time, I have seen a further deterioration in Los Angeles now than it was even a few months ago. Wow. Wow. What I saw on Sunset Boulevard, and you know, it's it, three months ago, it wasn't as bad as it's become. Yeah, unrecognizable. Unrecognized. I mean, this is a place I've been going to since I was a young guy. I just, it's just unre as you say, unrecognizable. Man, it's not the Sunset Strip anymore. It looks like <laughs> the Sunset Period. It's over, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely reached the sunset, and uh, it, it's it's like a third world country. I mean, I, I I lived not too far from there at one time in my life, so uh, familiar with it, but I can't recognize it. I mean, I nope. we don't even try to go. I mean, you really nope. would have to take some really, you know, you have to plan it out to go. Um, but you know, it, it's 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 reached a point where I don't think politicians or any of that sort want to do anything about it because of their programs that they that they invent in order to save the homeless and save the you know the cities. Uh, they're never going to have. Uh, they're never going to stop having these problems because uh, then the racket will come to an end. So they that need to correct. perpetuate it. They I need think to the policies of of <clears throat> of the state of California and certain other states, as well as the the Biden administration, is pro crime. You know these DAs funded by Soros and so forth. They're pro crime, pro fentanyl addiction, and pro death. Yeah. It must yeah. be deliberate. Or it should. must be deliberate. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking a lot about that because it, it comes from a uh, an interesting organization that has a lot of similar things. Yes. They, they want to perpetuate this into countries and cities. So uh, a big part of that. But we want to welcome those who are watching, those who are watching live on Rumble, on different sub platforms like YouTube and uh, Facebook and uh, but we'd like for you to go to Morial.tv. We'd like for you to go to uh, um, um, .org. Uh We'd like for you to go to those websites and, and really uh, participate in what we're building there. And the website is up. Morial.tv is up. So it's it's got great videos. It's got good stuff. It's got all the stuff you ever wanted to find in YouTube minus the censorship. But if you really want to destroy their censorship. And, and you watch on YouTube for some reason or another, take those videos, share it, like them, subscribe to them, 
get it out to the rest of the world because that's how you defeat the algorithm that they're trying to censor people. But Morial.tv keeps growing. Our podcasts keep growing. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff coming up this year too. So more of that to come. And uh, of course we have uh, one of the main uh, reasons for that. It's uh, we got Jay. Jay's here. How you doing, Jay? Amen. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha to you, Jacob. Enjoy. Uh, you, you were just here. You were just here. And now I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. You got to. This is either at the same time. That's what you got. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need to fix that. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, welcome, Jay. Thank you for uh, for being with us and always being at the control helm. And, uh, uh, you know, welcome those who are watching. And uh, Davey's on. Uh, I think Jonah's on the chat, too. So lots of good stuff. May the Lord bless you guys and those who are watching now and those who will watch later. Um, you know, may it be a blessing to you what we're going to discuss and hopefully lead mo more people to the yeah. Lord and yeah. um, opportunity to do that. And uh, by the way, Jacob's going to be preaching in DeVore next weekend. So if you're in the L.A. area, we got a video on that. I think Jay put it up already. You got, if you're in the L.A. area, come out. We're going to be dealing with the prof uh, the gospel and prophecy, the gospel and prophecy, uh, things about the prophecy, things about the gospel. They go together, Jesus said. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole na throughout the whole nations, and then the end will come. So let's get busy doing that. Let's get busy uh, looking at different things going on in the world and warn people that not only is sinister things coming down the line, but more importantly, Jesus Amen. is coming very soon. So when we look at the world, we look at it through the lens of Scripture, lens of the Bible. So let's get caught up, Jacob. There's a lot of things going on, but I think the most formidable and most important things that we can talk about today in terms of world events, it's what's been going on in a little city in Europe called Davos. And there's a group there. There's a group of uh, elitists. I hate to use the word elitist because they're not better. They're simply a group of people that will desire to control the world. They have a theology. They have a group leader. They warn that the world is heading to catastrophe. And they're the only ones that can save the world, right? They have a teaching that has to be accepted as true science. And by the way, it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money, they say, for them to save the world. Uh, it is called the World Economic Forum. It is the rising of a system that, for lack of a better term, we call it the beast system that has climate change initiatives, uh, central bank digital currency initiatives, economic initiatives, censorship initiatives. Bottom line, they call it the Great Reset. And the first thing that they came out right off the bat, Jacob, is free speech. They said this is the greatest threat to the world is free speech. They call it misinformation as a global risk. And they literally published the report. And I want to play a video for you. It's by one of the attendees this year. His name is Joe Manchin. You might know who he is from the United States. And West Joe, Virginia. that's right. And Joe has been very busy at the World Economic Forum, and he had something to say about free speech. Let's listen to what he said. Uh, the problem that we have is the open press system and basically all the platforms. So if you're able to have five platforms, social platforms, that you can basically um, personify the extremes somebody who is extremely right or extremely left. And it seems like that is the majority speaking. They're not the majority, but they're basically driving everybody to make a decision. What side are you on? Are you on this side or this side? And in America, there's only one side, the American side. It's not the Republican side or Democrat. We should be coming together to solve the problems from a different angle. The problem is we have too many platforms, he says. The problem is we can always find somebody to agree with us. The problem is we just have an open press, he says. Jacob, your thoughts. I mean, Manchin is like the darling of the Dem of at least some independent and conservatives because he's a Democrat, but he fights against a machine. Uh, but he seems to be lock in step with their talking points. What do you think? Well, Manchin is a vestige of an age gone by, the age of centrist Democrats, such as JFK, such as um Senators Henry Scoop Jackson, people like that. They are an extinct species. Manchin tries to present himself as a leftover from that era, but he's not really. When it comes to party politics, ultimately he sides 
with Schumer and Pelosi. He's not a centrist Democrat. He is somebody who just is forced politically to play that card to get reelected in West Virginia, where the coal industry and coal mining jobs are under threat from the globalists and the Green Party agendas and so forth. He's forced to pretend to be something he isn't. He's not really a rudiment of conserv- of a right center Democratic Party that doesn't exist anymore. He is just a politician. Just a politician walking around Davos. By the way, he did that session with Brian Kemp and Christian Cinema. Yep. There was another guy to uh, 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 Senator Chris Coons from Delaware. Yes. And, and speaking along the sides of let's get rid of platforms and just have one particular uh, platform so we can all agree on one thing. Let's be yes. Americans. Let's it's Vestia, Pravda. One platform like it's Vestia and Pravda. Yeah. One thing Moriel has ever, has done in other ministries like CCRD has done is that we diversified in different platforms, have our own main flagship like yes. Moral Dot TV reach people through different arms. Uh, what he's saying is, no, Jacob, you can't have that. You need to be in line step with us and have one platform where we can monitor all of that course. you're saying. That This is Brian Kemp. This is uh, uh, Chris Coons. This is Christian Cinema. This is the what we would consider the middle of the road Republican slash yeah, Democrat. Cinema's another one who tries to pretend to be a centrist Democrat, but she isn't. Hmm. And, and and people do like her because she's not like a radical leftist, I suppose, maybe like uh, AOC or something like that. But I wanted to play this one, too. This is uh, yeah, by the way, the packaging, it's only the packaging that's different, not the contents of the package. Yes. The um, CNN and ex-CNN guy, Brian Stelter. Yes. You won't believe it. They actually hosted a whole panel section on misinformation, if you could believe that. Uh, I guess the poster child for what it is, it's misinformation, it's CNN, but they claim that soon we're going to have to criminalize hate speech. So this is uh, uh, the European Commission and Vice President Vera Jourova speaking with Brian Stelter, of all people, about illegal speech. Well, we need the people who understand the language and the case law in the country, Mm. because what qualifies as hate, hate speech, as illegal hate speech, which you will have soon also in the U.S. I think that um, we we have a strong reason why we have this in the criminal law. Uh, we uh, we need the platforms uh, to simply work with, with the language and to identify such cases. The AI would be too dangerous. Well, they don't want to implement AI yet, which I think they're already done so in, in a lot of ways. But they said, hey, illegal speech is coming. Uh, yes, hate is going to be criminalized, just like they do in Europe to a certain extent. Uh, it's already here in the states. But what do they have in mind, Jacob? But what's your thought on, on on criminalizing hate speech? What will be hate speech in this new brave world? Hate speech is actually defined as disagreeing with us. You had the police in England and Britain harassing people who disagree with the same sex agenda, and it's being called hate speech. And the police are visiting people. People are being criminally investigated for holding to traditional Judeo-Christian moral values that are somehow scripturally based. They're going to be calling the book of Deuteronomy chapter, I'm sorry, the book of Leviticus chapter 18, hate speech. They're going to call Romans chapter 1 in the New Testament hate speech. (laughs) That is what will be hate speech. Now, notice what these people do. It is disinformation that's the problem. You had a a corrupt federal government, a corrupt Justice Department in the United States, a corrupt FBI, a political Gestapo pretending to be a legitimate law enforcement and criminal investigation organization, which it no longer is to the extent that ever has been one. And they had a dossier paid for by the Clinton campaign, knowing it was false, getting FISA warrants under, under, under fabricated testimony to harass a seated, democratically elected president with what they knew to be a lie. They perpetrated two impeachment procedures that were politically, not juridically, politically motivated, based on malicious fabrication, okay? And then they say that it is... uh, 
the danger is untrue reporting. <laughs> Notice they accuse their opponents of what they are guilty of themselves. They accuse their opposition of the very things, of the very crimes against the Constitution and against the public and against democracy. The very crimes that they perpetrated in violation of their own oaths is what they accuse their opponents of being. Uh, they'll call it hate speech. They'll call it anything they want. They'll call it disinformation. But they're the ones who propagated the most disinformation. Um, you know, the, the, the way the Obama administration, the way Barack Obama over 30 times lied, saying that if you like your health care policy that you already have, you can keep it. Barack Obama is a pathological liar who lied over 30 times, lied over 30 times, and does so with impunity. But if you criticize him for being a liar and wrecking havoc of the national health system that was already not in good health, in Arizona alone, health care costs went up 117% after that liar, Barack Obama, said that health care costs would not go up above $2,500 for a family. They went up 117% in Arizona. This liar. And if you say that this liar is a liar, which he obviously is a liar, you're a racist because he says he's black, even though he grew up white. Um, it's absurd. The, the, the very people who are the most guilty of disinformation accuse other people of their own crime and say, we have to control any criticism of our lies. We can lie, but if you tell the truth, we have to call you a liar. <laughs> this is Orwellian, this is Pravda, this is its vestia. This is what we're coming to. Yeah, and satanic, the father of, of the father of lies, the devil. I mean, you look at Fauci, you look at Biden, you look at all Biden, these guys. Fauci, that yes. Yeah, it, it just one lie after another, and 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 our concern, of course, uh, Jacob, is it's of course free speech and 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 freedom of speech, but also the gospel preaching. Uh, you, you mentioned that you watched this video. I'm just going to play it for you very quickly. It's a uh, the gentleman in Minnesota at the Great Mall of America who uh, uh, was asked to uh, remove his shirt because it had some you know terrible things on it. It had Jesus on it, according to them. It was terrible. <laughs> So he's asked to remove the shirt because he's not saying anything. He's simply wearing a shirt that says Jesus is the way, coexist. It's not the way, coexist is it's a lie, um, what I'm saying, but Jesus is the only way. And without saying anything, he has to remove the shirt in order to remain in the establishment. Otherwise, he'll be escorted out. He later on in the video, he had preached there before. He had shared the gospel before in some way. Uh, but now he says, I'm not even saying anything. And I'm being asked to leave. And there's complaints from Muslims that his shirt is offensive. And uh, it, the examples you gave, Jacob, earlier about people being uh, being thrown in jail, the, the, the one we looked at the other day. The woman praying in front of the abortion uh, clinic, silently praying. Yes. Not only yes. what you said, but simply your thoughts, simply your shirt. I mean, what kind of a world are we stepping into? Yes. In the filthy barbarian culture of fundamentalist Islam, Christians are not allowed to disseminate the Christian message. So therefore, when we allow these barbarians to come as refugees to the United States from Somalia, who should not have been allowed to come here, You've got Omar, this congresswoman, so-called, who married her brother, allegedly. Yeah. 
That's an anti-Semite. These people should never have been allowed in this country to begin with, not because they're Muslim, but because they do not accept our constitutional rights of religious freedom and diversity as constitutionally defined diversity. No, we don't want Christianity in our country that we left as refugees to come to your country. Our Islamic civilization is so good we want to leave it and come to your country, but then we want to bring these same Islamic values with us, and you can't offend us with your Christianity in your own country. This is exactly what Islam is doing in Europe and Britain, and it's what they're doing in America. And there's people who will vote for Omar. This is God's judgment on America. It is God's judgment because we have turned their backs on the on the Bible. Now, I want those Muslims to be saved, but you can't preach to them. I'd like to say, well, these Muslims came to America so they could hear the gospel because they can't hear it in Somalia. No, no, no. They can't hear it in America either. Well, then go back to Somalia where you came from. Nobody made you come here. If the Muslim world is so good and your religion is so good and your values are so good, why didn't you stay where you belong? Why did you come here to take advantage of our freedom in order to deprive us of our freedom? Now, this is the reality. Yeah. What they did to Ethiopian Christians and what they did to mm -hmm. Somalian Christians was unspeakable. And we let them come to this country. We should not have let them come to this country. And this is the this is the the the, the wonderfulness of multiculturalism, right? Where you where you try to melt all you uh, all religions and all societies and all social aspects together because hey, we all need to get along. We need to coexist, just like that gentleman's shirt said, coexist. But Jesus is the only way. That's yeah, correct. Jesus is not tolerated. It's not tolerated, and this is a uh, Jacob within our lifetime where we see Christianity it, banned. As, okay. I will not tolerate those who are not tolerant. And fundamentalist Islam is not tolerant. Therefore, we should not tolerate fundamentalist Islam in a free society. You cannot tolerate people who are intolerant of others. Thank God it's just the left, right, who's doing this. Thank God the left is the only one that is, that we have the Republicans and we have the conservatives who are standing up for, for free speech, right? Because that, that's really what we need is somebody some to at least stand up. Some Republicans. <laughs> There's been a report, Jake, about it. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm going to ask Jay to comment on it. Um, there's been some conservative talk show hosts, you could say that, uh, who are warning that the the same sort of censorship model that the big tech has is being now implemented in conservative platforms, and uh, including the Daily Wire is trying to bring some kind of censorship to people that they're trying to bring on to their platforms. And uh, it's interesting that it seems to be they're colluding with big tech in terms of how they're going to do this. And uh, the, the gentleman that I'm talking about is Crowder. Uh, what's his first name, Jay? Stephen Crowder. Crowder. What happened with them, Jay? You had this incredible, incredible news that happened. I couldn't believe it. But then again, I can. So uh, I, I have been watching Stephen Crowder for a while, and I do enjoy how he 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 really does take on uh, trans um, trans rights. He takes on the gay agenda. He takes on a lot of things. You know, right now he has just been he left the blaze, which is another conservative consortium uh, media. And he's looking where to land. And he was offered by his his good friends at the Daily Wire a lucrative contract. But when he examined the contract, he found that the Daily Wire basically was kowtowing to big tech by saying, if you are demonetized from YouTube, we will take 25% of our offer off the table from your paycheck. If you're demonetized from Apple, we will take another 25%. And Crowder made a very good point. For him, it really doesn't matter. Because he's already big enough that he does not need the contract. What he's actually complaining and why he's bringing this to light is he is afraid that the door is being shut on the next generation of conservative talkers, newscasters, yep. people that do commentary that need that contract and see those zeros on the contract and will be willing to self censor just so that they can make the money and yes. to, for, to have someone like daily wire who goes on and on about how they're bucking the system of big media 
to give a contract like that. It, it's it's just it shows who they are. So if 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 the big tech censors you, then we're going to reduce your pay. Correct. If big tech wants to go after you, then we don't want you. Uh, we don't want basically what you're talking about in your in our platform. We're going to penalize you for it. Yep. If you tell the truth. Yeah. On our platform and big tech doesn't like it. We don't like it. So what's the difference between them and big tech? Yes, that's right. It, the same implementation and their collusion. It's colluding with big tech. Yep. Uh, and thank God we have like, you know, Morial.tv because that's really that's right. where, yeah, that, that's really where it's headed. And, and unless you have your own network, as it say, and then it's really not the, intent necessarily uh of moriel to be this like huge international news organization or anything like that we're gospel preaching ministry uh but we provide the news we provide commentary on the news we provide bible studies missions all that and um but if we were to i, I suppose if we were to go launch into a conservative outlet like that they would censor us too they would say you know you're, you're not Instantly. you're not good enough yeah Instantly. Crazy world. And this is, again, this is a conservative world that, you know what, we've had some reservations here on catching up regarding the, the conservative media outlets uh, and even conservatives, quote unquote conservatives, right, who, um, as Jacob pointed out, the the meeting in Mar-a-Lago, you know, the, the party for the uh, acceptance of marriage, the homosexual yes. marriage, uh, the Respect of Marriage Act, the Disrespect of Marriage Act. Uh, we've had... Uh, Things like uh, people like Dave Rubin was a very popular conservative who is married to a man, ad adopted children through surrogate. You know, he, he hired a couple of surrogate moms to have children. And he's accepted as a hero within the conservative. No one speaks about it. Uh, Daily Wire doesn't go against it. The Blaze doesn't go against it. Uh, what's the one? A Prager doesn't go against it. Uh, why? Why don't they speak out against what conservatism has always stood for, for families and against the destruction of the family, they're not doing that anymore. At what point are they just basically going to be Democrats, leftists? They're, they're moving away. Conservatism is moving away from biblical values. They're yeah. finding they're finding that they cannot they cannot continue to hold biblical values and win elections or be popular in, in the mainstream. That is where their focus being popular, being relevant. Yeah, not about yeah. truth, not about morality, not about what's good for society, being popular and relevant. But what James says is absolutely true in the political realm. But let's not forget, it's also true in the ecclesiological and theological realm. You exactly. have a politically animated or politically conscious or politically active Christians morally trying to save society or at least fight back against the same-sex agenda and things of that nature. And I don't dispute their motives at all, but they're willing to compromise with people who have heretical dogma, with people who are false teachers. Simply because they share the same political views, they'll get on a platform or a conference or a webcast or in anything with somebody who's a false teacher and a false prophet. And, 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 and they'll accept them as if they're, they're brethren and allies in Christ, when in fact they're not. They will compromise biblical truth, doctrinal truth, for the sake of the pursuit of a political agenda. And there are people I know who do that. There are pastors of major churches I know who will compromise biblical doctrine for the sake of a political pursuit. Yeah. Put doctrine aside and let's... Uh... Let's have a bigger, bigger, bigger response to, I guess, the leftist, leftist Marxist mentality, right? That's that's their idea. Put doctrine aside and go after the political. And that's thing. one reason God let them be so disappointed about the midterm elections. Yeah, yeah, the, the disappointment after disappointment. Uh, Jacob, let's talk about another thing that they brought up. A big part of it, their their agenda, of course, was you know how to unite in a fragmented world. That was kind of their theme. Uh, cooperation in a fragmented world. They believe cooperation will be censorship. They believe cooperation would be economically and technologically bringing CBDCs, artificial intelligence, robotics. This is the narrative, quantum computing. Many of these things were buzzwords, biotech, AI, quantum computing, gaming, uh, metaverse. Uh, they're embracing these things now. 
Uh, they openly talked about the metaverse as as a, as a as a whole section. With Klaus Schwab was actually the uh, one of the speakers there, where it's all about the metaverse, this this virtual world that you're going to get into. And he says it's it's going to be safe. He says because it's going to be monitored by Interpol. So you should trust it. Go into <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be That's a reason not Interpol. to trust it. <laughs> so, uh, central bank digital currency coming, ready or not, it's kind of it's it's they, they say it's a done deal in terms of how banks accept it and central banks accept it through the IMF and the World Banks. Um, what what's your take on this? One more thing too is it's the Saudis actually confirm the non-dollar oil trade plans that they have. They actually yeah. unveiled it in Davos in one of their in one of their uh, uh, side panels. They announced basically that they're going to officially settle trades for oil and natural gas in currencies other than the U.S. dollar. Uh, Jacob, I kind of gave you a lot. Let's let's put it all together here because it's all connected. How is this going to come about? And what's what's what are they saying? Why are they bringing this stuff up now? First of all, this is very much the fault of the Bush administration initially for not reacting to September 11th the way that we reacted to Pearl Harbor and holding the Saudi Arabians accountable. The failure to declare war on Saudi Arabia and just to take the oil when we had a, a legal and moral basis to do so. It's the fault of the oil who are Bush Cheney administration. We should have declared war on Saudi Arabia the way we did on Japan after September 11th. That's to begin with. They obviously sponsored and funded it. It was the House of Saud. We should have gone after them and taken their oil. We should have done to Mecca and Medina what they did to the World Trade Center and to the Pentagon. That's what we should have done. We should have declared war on Saudi Arabia immediately. And within a matter of hours, that's what we should have done. Uh, continuing to pander to these barbarians is the result. They're angry now about Iran and about the failure of the American government, particularly going back to Biden and and, and before that to, to Obama. Uh, placation of Iran by John Kerry, by Obama, by Hillary Clinton, and now by Biden. Um, that's what they're angry about. So we have this situation now where the dollar is being threatened as the basis of the world's currency reserve. That will definitely top, topple most of America's, or at least much of America's economic dominance in the world. But when America goes, there'll be a vacuum because there'll be no other currency or no other economy capable of filling that gap. Therefore, they will move to globalism, more global or try to. But now let's look at the globalism. As I've said, it is not really socialism or communism. It is not really capitalism. It is a plutocratic techno-feudalism. The Nazis were also socialists, the National Socialist Workers' Party. What you see now in the trends happening in the United States, they have more in common with the Nazis than they do the Soviet models of socialism. They have more in common with the, with, with, with the Nazi, with calling Israel apartheid and things of this nature, the anti-Semitism and so forth. Um, they behave like brown shirts. The kind of riots you saw in cities on the on the West Coast, they behave like Nazi brown shirts. Um, they're, they're more like Nazi socialists than they are like Soviet socialists, even though both Stalin and Hitler were socialists. Okay. So you've got this neo-feudalism, this techno-feudalism that is plutocratically controlled. Pro-crime, literally pro-crime governments, pro-crime district attorneys who are pro-crime. Um, th that's what's happening. It's it, it's heading in this direction. They think that they can hold the world somehow together. Now, this is what's going to happen. Mark my words. This is exactly what is going to happen and how it's going to happen. There will be fear and anxiety among the nations, none of them knowing the way out. The same as they hoped in the European Union. And the European Union is not working. The iron doesn't stick to the clay. Their agenda is not going to work. The globalist agenda will not work. It will fail. But when it fails, what do we do now? That is what is going to open the door for Antichrist on a political economic plateau. <laughs> and it'll be like a plateau. A political economic plateau 
that will welcome the Antichrist because the globalist agenda, the inclusivism, the woke, the whatever else they want, the global currency, it's not going to work. They will turn to Antichrist. And Antichrist will not only use AI, he will not only use political intrigue, he will use counterfeit signs and wonders performed by the false prophet. People will believe it. The globalist agenda will fail. It must fail. It can only fail. But when it does, what will they turn to next? It won't be to the God of the Bible. It won't be to Christ. It'll be to the Antichrist. Yeah. Exactly. And That's what's going work. to happen. Mark my words. That is what will happen politically and economically. All right. Jacob said it. Yeah, January 20th, uh, 20th today. Yeah, so. Hold me to it. I don't know how many years, but it's coming. That's how it's going to happen. Amen. To kill uh, two birds with one stone, Jacob, someone has asked in the comments when you mentioned plutocratic in the past, if you could give us a little bit of insight on what you mean by that word plutocratic. The control of the mechanisms of culture, economy, and government by the super rich. Very nice. Succinct. Thank you very much. Very nice. Uh, we want to welcome those who are watching. We thank you for the comments. And you know, Jay will pop in and out with comments like that. We appreciate your comments. Uh, insightful and helpful. We certainly will read them. We thank you so much for that. And those who are watching, uh, we're going to have a question and answer period at the end of Catching Up. And then we're going to go to backstage. So as you're watching on Vimeo and Facebook and, and all those platforms and Rumble, uh, Morial.tv, of course, uh, we want to welcome you. But then we will be signing off of Facebook and YouTube and heading to our own platforms, Morial.tv, uh, the, 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 the ones that help us like Rumble, like RTN and uh, moraltv.org. We're going to be going there and Vimeo. We're going to be going there and Telegram. There's so many. Uh, we're going to be going there for backstage. And we got some really powerful videos on backstage and Jacob commenting on them. So uh, even Jacob himself is just like, he's fed up with the World Economic Forum. So you want to hear what he has to say about them. He can't say it here. You have to go to backstage. So uh, we want to welcome you uh, to backstage as well. Jacob, speaking of dystopian models of government, um, the president of the World Economic Forum, Borgen Brendan, yes. uh, recently came out in, at Davos, said, came out and he says, you know what? The, the model of all this has to be China. Overall, they said it's very optimistic about the growth in China. I'm not sure what kind of growth he was talking about. But Schwab actually personally invited the the the, the vice chairman of the CCP, uh, Lee Hu, to the conference in which he spoke about how the, the wonderful praises of the CCP and their governance, especially in the midst of crisis. You know, remember, it's a fragmented world, how we need to cooperate. So China becomes the cooperative model of what they would like to see in the world. And, um, you know, this is, again, the loving communist uh uh, socialists, Marxists, you name it, Klaus Schwab inviting a CCP member and then the president of the World Economic Forum praising the brutal lockdowns uh, by the CCP administration. Uh, this is not a joke. They, 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 they did. They literally praise how they took the government and controlled the people. You've seen it. We've seen it here. Uh, again, one of these, these, these disasters of the World Economic Forum of putting China as the centerpiece of their global dominance. We are coming out thanks also to the leadership of China in terms of fighting the pandemic. Uh, Jacob, besides China, uh, I also want you to comment on those who missed Davos, and that was Soros and Trudeau. They're missing from 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 the list of uh, luminaries in that in that list. But uh, comment on China and, and why is the World Economic Forum so in love with a system that persecutes Christians, persecutes Chinese citizens in and out of China, and, and locks down, goes into medical tyranny? And destroys people's incomes and obviously uh, locks them into into their own homes for days and months at a time. Not to mention the world's biggest polluter, 
<laughs> or the epitome of everything the World Economic Forum claims to be against in terms of climate change and so forth. Environmental was a complete hypocrisy, total lie. Not to mention. Not to mention any of that. Not to mention a Ponzi scheme real estate system, real estate market. Um, not to mention a, a, a Ponzi scheme shadow banking system. Not to mention any of these things. Not to mention the human rights and civil rights, but human rights, even human rights abuses. Not to mention any of it. And that's what they want. Well, that's the world they want to give us. That's the world they want to give us. They're singing the praises of what they want. A brutal, anti-freedom, anti-humanitarian fascism controlled by an elite. That is what they want. They're being honest about it. They want to be an elite. They want to fly in on private jets, gas-guzzling flying machines, <laughs> and complain <laughs> about carbon footprints. Just Who, to make the board. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the party elite. And you've got the people. Well, you've got the globalist elite and you've got the rest of the world's population. That's what you've got. They want China because that's the kind of world they envision. Slavery, destruction of freedom, personal rights, the right to do anything they want with the economy, even though it assures economic doom in the long term, but they can still do it with impunity. They don't want any accountability. They don't want any freedom of speech or any right of protest. That is what they want. That is what they are. They are enemies of democracy. They're enemies of the human race. And they are enemies of God. They are satanic people. People that did not show up. Soros, Trudeau, uh, Jacinda Ardern which bombshell news yesterday. She is going to resign as the prime minister as of February 7th. Uh, she she claims that it is because she wants to, you know, the same talking points that every any politician makes. Uh, family, this job's taking a toll on me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and she's out. Resignation, shocking announcement. Uh, most people thought she was going to, well, she did say she was going to run for re-election again. Uh, now we have reports that she's not very popular in New Zealand. There's some reports of um, interior investigation on her policies against people during the 2020 lockdowns and what they what she did to, um, you know, what she did to her citizens. So as soon as those reports come out, she resigns. Uh, Jacob, in reality, we might not ever know why she's resigning, but we, we can make some guesses based on the facts that we have. Uh, what's your take? Why is she leaving so soon? She's one of those. So, Klaus Zealand, Schwab it was one of my favorite countries in the world to visit until she got hold of it. I had always previously thought that the worst thing that ever happened to New Zealand in my lifetime was the two Christchurch earthquakes that they completely demolished that city. I saw with my own eyes what it did. I was there before, and I knew Christchurch quite well before the earthquakes, and I was there after the earthquakes. I thought the worst thing that ever happened in New Zealand was the Christchurch earthquakes until she got elected. The capital was no longer Wellington. It was Ellington. She is a wicked, wicked woman. Now, she's evil. However... She is of the same generation of Schwab slobs as Elliot Trudeau, as Trudeau, and as of Andrews in Australia, as Macron, etc. Understand the way feudalism works. Again, we're talking about a techno-feudalism. In feudalism, you have the nobility, the plutocrats, okay, the super rich, and then you had the vassals, the vassals the vacillating sub servants of the super rich, okay? She was a vassal. Trudeau was a vassal. Andrews was a vassal. Vassals come and go. <laughs> the plutocrats can replace vassals at a whim. What you are seeing within the WEF this time is a changing of the guard among the vassals. That's all. You're seeing people who had been players previously having less of a role now than they had in times past. That includes Trudeau. It includes Adern. It includes others. 
the feudal lords, the plutocrats, the feudal lords, will simply replace the vassals. It is not a meritocracy where the people who work the hardest or study the hardest or, or the most clever in business or the most inventive prevail and, and then climb the ladder of success. In a feudalistic system, it's whichever vassals serve the interest of the establishment the best. You climb the ladder by being a vassal. Just think of the Soviet Union. You had to join the party and serve the interest of the Politburo. Whoever was the biggest bootlicker had the nicest house and the nicest job. Well, it's the same thing in Dava. Whoever's the biggest bootlicker will have the, the better positions. You know, I thought Arden was a big bootlicker, but I guess he, I guess he's done. They're done with her. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, you know, you didn't do a very good job, Miss Arden, when you licked my boots the last time. Now I have to get someone else to lick them. You know, here's your pink slip. Have a nice day. That you are seeing a changing of the guard to a degree. And by the, the feudalistic overlords. This is yeah. how feudalism works. It's standard feudalism. In Russia, people would do anything. If you were to read the Gulag Archipelago or you read the, the history of, of Stalinism, people would lick Stalin's boots, do anything <laughs> they could to, to, to please Stalin. But then there'd be a purge and they'd all disappear and never be heard from again. <laughs> that is the way it works. It's the way the game is played. Hey, hey, man. They are just uh, vassals hey, of the feudal overlords. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Danny, you're closer to there than we are in Australia. And in Australia, is no picnic at this point. But uh, they didn't have an Arden. They have a, a Albanese and, and you got a... Well, you can tell me more about him. Uh, I don't even want to say his name. Let's just say it starts with a D and ends with the in, in the second middle uh, last name starts with an A. But uh, what, what's your what's Australia's take on it? What are the believers saying over there? Well, <laughs> um, my first uh, initial reaction as soon as I heard the news, I was so overjoyed. I dropped everything. I was at work and did a cartwheel. <laughs> uh, I, 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 did my, I, I did the haka. I did the haka. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I thought my reaction was extreme until I saw a few other posts on uh, Twitter and that. But, um, yeah, a lot of us are so overjoyed. Um, we're just thankful for small mercies, I guess. Um, going back to what you were saying before, though, Marco, about, uh, <laughs> yeah, who we have here, it's kind of like we always used to think uh, as bad as things were here, we used to think, oh, well, at least we we don't have her. At least we don't have her. We used to kind of refer to her, okay, you guys, you've got the Wicked Witch of the West. We've got the demonized flying monkey. That's how we kind of review it. So, uh, But, um, yeah, as what Jacob was saying, though, before is so true. It's kind of like she's uh, – her useful days are over, so they just throw her out with the trash now. The problem is now uh, who are we going to get next or probably right. just as bad, if not worse. But um, the only people I've seen uh, have a kind word about her too have been people like El Anthony Albanese, and they're only doing it for their own political gains. Yes. They're not saying anything nice because they mean it. It's only just to because it's a political correct thing to do or to advance their own sort of thing. But none of can ever forget um, what just the damage and harm that Jacinta Ardern has done. And let's not forget her speech at the UN where she was calling for the global governance, the global censorship um, uh, thing that she was promoting. So yeah. she's been on that from the word go. Uh, just the her cold, um, unmerciful comments that she made, you know, um, about, you know, how she treated the unvaccinated. She never had any mercy tempered in any of her comments. And uh, basically, uh, we're seeing that she's reaping what she sows. Um, the comments on Twitter <laughs> uh, uh, are justified. And, um, yeah, she'll, she'll get no mercy from most people. There's only going to be a few, uh, but most are going to show her no mercy. 
And she's going to be a prisoner now of her own making, a prisoner of her own circumstances. She's getting out of politics, but it doesn't matter where she goes. Um, she's never going to escape this. Her her legacy is going to stay with her. Uh, I think of it, was it in Proverbs where it says, a wicked, a wicked man flees where no one pursues. Yes. Yes. Oh, doesn't matter where she goes now. She's going to be a prisoner of that guilt unless she, yes. unless yes. something happens and she turns and repents. Yeah. But the damage she has done has been unbelievable. But there is joy in the streets of New Zealand. There's joy in the streets of Australia. There's joy in the streets um, in the UK, all over the world. People are rejoicing at what at her at her <laughs> demise. Yes. Um, so her, her laws, especially the abortion laws that she was passing last year, last two years, were, I mean, America's got one of the worst ones, but New Zealand just overtook that. Uh, the, the reality of what they were doing to babies, it, it was yes. unthinkable that people would put up with it, but she passed them. She, she was able to pass them through. I couldn't believe it. Just so extreme, so extreme. Yeah, we are. We are so glad to see you gone. We are so glad to see you go. And I think it gives us hope too that um, uh, maybe that demonized flying monkey may be next, or um, <laughs> Astro Junior, or uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, it gives us hope. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about Jacinda in back on backstage. So don't, 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 guys, don't leave and, and don't miss out on that because we got more stuff about especially dealing with, uh, let's just say, some underage stuff yes. that uh, she was very much helpful in lowering. So uh, let, let's let's continue, though, because one of the things that they talked about was absolutely uh, the planetary crisis that they that they believe the planet is in. Uh, there's been people, and uh, I know, Jake, if you know this or know anybody like this, but, but in the States, there's people that believe within 10 years, 20 years ago, within 10 years, the earth was going to be done. It was going to be over. Yeah. Humanity was going to be lost. You, you know, we had Al, in the was 70s. Pretty much Al Gore was along that line, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and now AOC is drumming the same line. Uh, you know, people like, like her and the squad, that if we don't do something about it, the planet is going to end in less than 10 years. Now, they've been saying this since the 70s with global warming, you know, acid rain. Uh, then they talked about the ozone hole. The ozone layers had a hole in it. Then they went back to climate change. Now it's carbon, and it's 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 on and on and on. But this is how they started. One of the first meetings they had at Davos was this, you know, video that they played in terms of planetary crisis. Dear friends, scientifically, this is not a climate crisis. We are now facing something deeper: mass extinction, air pollution, undermining ecosystem functions, really putting humanity's future at risk. This is a planetary crisis. This is a safety crisis, but above all, it is also a justice crisis. Many areas in the world are uninhabitable. This uninhabitable zone is increasing. If we continue with our greenhouse gas emissions, then by 2070, as many as 3 billion people will live in uninhabitable zones. So this is the planetary crisis. And of course, uh, you got Mr. Lurch, John Kerry, yes. speaking about his extraterrestrial powers. I couldn't believe this one. And neither could you unless you hear him. His extraterrestrial powers. And when you start to think about it, it's pretty extraordinary that we, a select group of human beings, because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives, are able to sit in a room and come together and uh, actually talk about saving the planet. I mean, it's so almost extraterrestrial to think about, quote, saving the planet. If you said that to most people, most people, they think you're just a crazy tree-hugging, lefty, liberal, you know, do-gooder, whatever, and, and there's no relationship. But really, that's where we are. <laughs> Wow. Every time I hear it, I think of something else. But uh, extraterrestrial power, somebody touched them and then made them do all this planetary crisis. Uh, Jacob, they certainly have some kind of um, eschatological uh, doctrine that they have that they want to promote, different than the Bible. Uh, but they use this for 
you know, for, for proclaiming that they need more money and they need more time and they need more money. As John Kerry said before, money, money, money. I need more money yes. to get all this stuff done. He flies on his private jet to pick up an award, uh, which basically the award was for uh, climate change and cleaning up the planet at the same time riding his uh, his plane. Um, Jacob, for for even the young people, and, and, and I guess I have to always go to Jay for this too, because he's a lot younger than me. Um, a lot of millennials, a lot of Generation Z, what they call, do believe this, that the planet is doomed, that unless they do something, unless they give power and authority to these uh, yes. uh, group of people, uh, we're done and, and, and we're not going to survive another 10 years. Uh, and, they, and they say, well, Christians have been telling us the world's going to end you know, for a long time, so maybe it's true. So, Jacob, I want you to dis- dismiss and, and separate the two eschatologies. Give us the biblical one. Give us their crazy eschatology that they have. And how is this going to work out? Okay. First of all, you make it clear drawing with the dualism or the contrast between the two. You're absolutely correct. Let me explain it this way. This is only for believers. This is not for unsaved people. It's only for believers so, and certain believers probably. Um, <clears throat> it's like this. The Antichrist will counterfeit Christ. He'll counterfeit the resurrection. He will counterfeit the millennial reign of Christ. But he will also counterfeit the judgments. Mm. Okay? God makes it clear that a time is coming with the trumpet judgments, particularly the three woes, but the trumpet judgments and then the three woes within the trumpet judgments, that there will be an environmentally cataclysmic series of judgments poured out by God. The things that they're predicting are actually going to happen as an act of divine judgment against the kingdom of Antichrist, okay? The only way for all flesh not to perish, if the days had not been cut short, no flesh would be saved, would be the return of Christ. Antichrist counterfeits that. He brings in this counterfeit (coughs) ecological destruction of the biosphere. So people will look to him. If you don't turn to me, the human race will be wiped out. No flesh will be saved if you don't turn to me. (coughs) Don't understand what's happening now. It's an antichrist spirit. It counterfeits what takes place. In the book of Revelation, with the trumpet judgments and the three woes, <laughs> what they're saying is, is, is about to happen, will eventually happen as an act of divine judgment, in which the only way out of it will be Christ coming to set up his millennial kingdom. Antichrist counterfeits that. Mm. What you're seeing now is the ant- the pieces of the Antichrist counterfeit being put into place. Does that explain it? Yeah, uh, pretty much. It's the 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 same thing that he's been doing before. You know, right. Preparing That's the right. world for Antichrist. The Holy Spirit is preparing the world for Jesus Christ. And a counterfeit plan, a counterfeit Jesus, a counterfeit miracle. That is counterfeit. correct. Yeah. And, and the world's being set up by this. Of course it is. This. Yeah, it's being not set only up the world, the, but the apostate church will be caught end up. up yeah, which will end up in Babylon the Great. Yeah, yes. yeah we we're going to talk yes. about Babylon a little bit on, on, on next weekend when you're here, Jacob. So that'll be yes. pretty interesting on Babylon, Egypt, and the Palm of God. Uh, that's going to be you know pretty fascinating to see, and it's it is fascinating to see. I mean, extraterrestrial. I mean, he he. It's bizarre language that they use sometimes. It, it's just really weird. Well, we've been um, was- Marco, for over 25 years, that one of the things the Antichrist is going to use with the signs and wonders in the heavenlies, with the false prophet, are going to be extraterrestrial phenomena. It is going to, in some way, be just like the days of Noah with the Nephilim. Now, I know there's all kinds of conspiracy theorists and crazy people saying things about the Nephilim and the Anakim. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about what Jesus said, just as it was in the days of Noah. You will see some kind of demonoids incarnated on the earth. And it is going to involve something 
Nephilim from the Hebrew Nepal to fall from the sky, to fall from the heavens. It is going to happen. I know Christians, I was only one of a number of Christians I, 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 uh, that, that I knew, John Weldon being another. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm right near where John Weldon used to live here in Maui, the late Christian author John Maui, now with the Lord, that the Antichrist was going to use extraterrestrial phenomena. The, the, the false prophet, and now you see Carrie talking about it, and he's talking about it at the same time the, the Pentagon admits these things exist. <laughs> at some point, someone, in my opinion, someone's going to claim some kind of yes. direct, li not lineage per se, but maybe direct connection to these uh, to these yes. extraterrestrial beings. Well, Carrie looks like he looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> Now maybe maybe that's what they need five thousand troops, armed troops, to keep them, you know, yeah. to keep them from from anybody else. So um, now they they did speak also about the war, and and I know we're we're speeding very closely to the time now. They're running out of time for the questions, but uh, Jacob, real quick, the uh, they had Olena Zelenska, the, uh, the the first lady of Ukraine, speak. Uh, they're trying to kind of make her into like a, a, a Jacinda Ardern. She should run for office yes. and all this stuff. And they had Vladimir speaking through Skype or, or some kind of uh, network there uh, via Skype uh, onto the uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, but their their reports, of course, Kissinger was there, actually Kissinger and a norm, number of NATO guys talking about that they should they should go forward and support Ukraine. We need to get behind Ukraine. The, the, the drums of war were definitely sounding in Davos throughout this conference. Uh, there's 50 different countries that are going to be meeting in Germany, and I forget the uh, Ramstein, Germany, to discuss what to give Ukraine. They're doing Japan, it today. They're, they're, they're doing it today. Is it today? Okay. Uh, Australia, South Korea, Japan, of course, U.S., Germany, um, giving them Patriot missiles, giving them German tanks. The Russia has said already, look, if they give them German tanks and they cross into our into our border, it, it's war. Um, <coughs> Now they they talk about peace and you know avoiding global disasters, but at the same time they double down on let's destroy Russia and support Ukraine and make this war happen. Seemingly these are warmongers. They talk peace, peace, but there is no peace. There is no peace. To be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Look, I think all of us are sympathetic to the people of the Ukraine and or are antagonistic towards Putin, who's a neo-Stalinist. We warned he was a neo-Stalinist 20 years ago, at least. Um, everybody knows that. But as we've said consistently, Zelensky is no more than a lesser of two evils. The government of, of Ukraine was completely, completely corrupt, a la Hunter Biden, etc. It was a corrupt economy, a corrupted economy with a corrupt government. Zelensky is... is, 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 is no righteous leader. He, he He's nothing like that. He's simply a lesser of two evils. Not only that, as is usual, the support for the Ukraine is disproportionate. It is a ripoff of the American taxpayer. Europe is, as usual, not paying its fair share. That That is what is happening. Um, had Donald Trump been the president... And I, I, I don't plan on voting for him again. If he, if he runs, I'm not planning on voting for him again because of what happened with the homosexual event he hosted at Mar-a-Lago. I would never vote for Donald Trump again. But had he been president, Putin would not have invaded Ukraine. It would not have happened had Trump been president. North Korea would not be shooting rockets or missiles over, over Japan again had Trump been president. Afghanistan would not have fallen to the hands of the Taliban had Trump been the president. That is a fact. These things are factually undeniable. But, of course, the mainstream media is just ignoring it in favor of what you see happening in Davos. It's all hypocrisy. This whole thing, like Afghanistan, like what's happening in North Korea, never should have happened. China would not be threatening Taiwan had Trump been president. It never would have happened if you had a conservative president. 
Now, again, I'm very disappointed in Mr. Trump. I hope he does not run again. I hope he withdraws from the election because of what he did at Mar-a-Lago particularly and because of the bad leadership he exhibited in the midterm elections, getting candidates like Oz and so forth who lost. I think he's politically finished, or he should be. But had he been the president, these things wouldn't have happened. That is a fact. It is also a fact that... The support for the Ukraine is a ripoff of the American taxpayer. Europe is not paying its fair share. It is also a fact that Mr. Zelensky is nothing more than a lesser of two evils. And although they have a Jewish president, um, it, it, and it was nonsense to exaggerate it the way Putin did, that you have a neo-Nazi element running the Ukraine, there is a neo-Nazi element in the Ukraine. Oh, yeah, of course. And certainly of course. in Western Ukraine, you have that. Now, I don't believe it, it's what Putin said. They wouldn't have a Jewish president if it was. But I'm no fan of of, of the Ukrainian government. I'm, I'm sympathetic to the, Iranian, the Ukrainian people. And I don't like what Putin's doing to them. But to make Zelensky out to be some kind of a good guy, you know, it's it's, it's more like Roosevelt and, and Churchill had to pretend to be friends with Stalin <laughs> when they were up against Hitler. That's all. It's a relationship, an alliance of convenience. Yeah, and, and, and very much using, using Ukraine, of course, as, as just basically the hub of all the corruption and all the money and all, all, the, all, all the laundry money. But we get in reports that Russia is preparing because of what they're doing in NATO, what they're doing in uh, what they're meeting in, uh, in in Germany this week, and um, early February, it's some of the reports that uh, yeah. dr- uh, Russia will begin to counterattack from three different areas. We've been, the Black saying, sea. We've been saying this for two months, Marco, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Belarus and now Donetsk and Luhansk, which is part of the territory now that they got so. Uh, just a year, just a year ago, it, it, it began right around this time. So a whole year later, we're dealing with this again. So that is why you're um, seeing the deployment of Patriot missiles, and that is why you're seeing the demands for Leopard tanks. That's it. You got it. You got it. And Bingo. Too, but particularly Leopard tanks. The X- XM1 would not work well because it, it's they're too heavy and they require too much maintenance and. and and ground support, the Ukrainians couldn't handle American XM1s, but they could yeah. be trained quickly how to man and operate and maintain German Leopard 2s, and that would be a game changer. Planetary crisis, right? Pla- they talk yeah. about the other planetary, I think this is more of a planetary crisis, why aren't they yes. talking about this? Instead, instead, they're throwing more logs into the fire and saying, yeah, That's we correct. need to come against uh, against Russia. Uh, just before we finish, we're coming down to the end of catching up and we're going to move into, well, the end of our topics and moving into questions. So start sending your questions in. We'll ask Jacob a couple more questions and uh, then we'll get him into rapid fire questions. But uh, the one thing, Jacob, that's pretty interesting is, uh, you know, you have the scandal, Biden and the documents, the official documents they were found in his garage or found in his office. Hunter Biden's home. I mean, there's a whole litany of things going on in there, including the fact that, you know, maybe he's got ties with China that are deeper than we thought. We all knew he did, but now it's even more. Uh, But he's also doing something else. He is attaching America to this, uh, what they call the uh, DNA, for lack of a better word. It's the Declaration of North America with Mexico and Canada to bring about a one block of one system, one block of government, diversity, climate change, you know, the same buzzwords that everybody uses for this, health, regional security, WH, uh, WHO stuff, WEF stuff, uh, more wokeism into America and Canada and Mexico. Uh, he signed it. He wants to sign this declaration. He did it. Uh, what does this mean, Jacob, in light of the scandal? Is he on his way out? Is Hunter Biden too in bed with the Chinese government or the CCP? What do you think? If there were any, if honesty and common sense prevailed in the mainstream media, the obvious question would be, is Hunter Biden a Chinese spy? Is he a spy for the CCP? It is the obvious question that common sense dictates must be answered. There were reports today that a Chinese woman was involved in the transportation of documents. Mm -hmm. 
and that Hunter Biden had access to them. Hunter Biden gave keys to that facility at the at the university of the <laughs> where some of the documents were, were were illegally being stored, and and he gave keys yeah. to Chinese officials. Is Hunter Biden a Chinese spy? It is an obvious question. Now we know his surprised. father. We know his father is an unprincipled liar who denied that he ever discussed his son's business ventures with his son or sold influence for um, uh, money or anything. We know that Joe Biden is an unprincipled liar. That, that that's a fait accompli. Um, but why is Hunter Biden not being investigated by the corrupt FBI, which is nothing more than a political Gestapo that should be replaced? Why are they not investigating Hunter Biden uh, as a suspect for foreign espionage? Um, I don't know what the laws are, but is is he guilty of a de facto treason? Is he? Um, mm. can, can he be capitally executed for it? I would hope so. But these are the these are the questions that need to be answered, and they're not even being asked. The questions that need to be answered are not even being asked by the mainstream media. Well, I don't expect the Republicans to ask any questions either, no. or a federal investigation. I don't think a Congress. No, no. Mitch McConnell would take take Hunter Biden out for a Chinese dinner. You know. <laughs> I don't imagine any other Chinese spies will come to that uh, to that meeting. Would you think? <laughs> Let's say from the female persuasion. That's right. Uh, oh, by the way, it's interesting. Uh, uh, talking about Trump and the Republican Party, he announced that um, if he runs, well, he's he's, he's announced he's going to run. But uh, Lindsey Graham will be a big part of his uh, uh, be part, big part of his uh, campaign. A and rhino. Thought, oh, a rhino. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. But uh, right, so yeah, I know. What do you think about this DNA stuff, Jacob? No, no, not, not the human genome. Right? We'll talk about that okay. later. But the declaration it raises of North the America. possibility that some people have suggested and that we have raised as as a possibility that the ten, the ten horns, could be not simply a reconfederated Europe or the world. Uh, or the European, um, uh, what's the European uh, Union, the EU? Yeah. Could it be 10 global trade blocks, like the, off, like the uh, Organization of African Unity yeah. and the EU and what had been after, yeah. now DNA? Could it yeah. be, could, it, could the 10 horns be that? In other words, can the 10 horns be considered something different than... The ten toes. Yeah, that's a great question. We need to answer that. And, and I think it's pertinent to that question. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah. Uh, but does it does it Congress have to sign this? I mean, I, I suppose the president can, but yeah, has Congress to has to approve a treaty. Yeah, but somehow Obama was able to finagle yeah. a de facto observance of a treaty with Iran before the Senate approved it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're living basically what Obama did. It's just in, in, is being imposed now. That this this yeah, evil. Right. It's and, just and imposition. Basically, yeah, exactly. They will, uh, they, they will either impose things by courts or by executive order. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, Jay. According to international law, anything that the president signs with another country is internationally binding. The uh, the way the system was originally set up is that the Senate. And the legislature must give advisory and consent to anything the president signs. But in recent years, the more and more we're, we're seeing uh, these executive orders and just the, the character of most pre presidents, to be honest, is they can't, they're they doing it unilaterally without any advisory or consent from elected officials, which is therefore a very specific reason that the people are represented in the treaties that yep. we sign. Yeah, exactly. And some of the things that they're bringing in, Jay, is like diversity, equity, LGBTQI+, plus, yes. because they see Mexico doesn't have enough yep. um, climate change in the environment. So 
you know, even more restriction on, 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 you know, fossil fuel and things like that, competitiveness, you know, economically migration. So one, one block, basically no, no borders in a sense of like, you can, you can travel just like the EU, you can travel through throughout the, uh, the, 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 the European countries that are in the EU uh, migration health. So they WHO stuff and then regional security. So basically, uh, treaties in terms of defense against, against enemies. So, um, this is, to be this very is clear stuff. to be very clear. What Biden has done has ensured that the fentanyl problem that's coming yep. from China yep. is going to be worse in the United States and Canada coming yep. soon to you, Trudeau. You're going to understand the fentanyl problem that we face on the border and in California and in Arizona. China is going to deluge the entire North American continent with drugs. That's right. With the, with the blessings of the Democratic Party. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I mean, we're going to get uh, socialized uh, socialism from, and, and communism from, from Canada more drugs and fentanyl from the southern border. It, it's just going to be one happy DNA. It's going to be just, just, uh, and, and the lockdowns and suppressions and WHO stuff, more, more of that stuff. So may God keep us from, from things like that and protect us through it. Um, Jacob, you ready for questions? We got them in. I'm ready. Let's do it. And uh, we appreciate you guys sending your questions. And uh, we got a we got a several questions here. So let's begin with the first one. Rapid fire. Jacob, do you know about Zulox gay couples that may be sentenced nine lifetimes, which is ridiculous? Should they be prayed for LGBTQ and prostitution? The Zulox. This is uh, this is evil. I don't know anything about this. Do you, Jacob? No, but there's a lot of stories like that floating on the Internet. And they're hard to document and verify as being absolutely true. Very often what happens with situations like this is there is a kernel of truth in it, but people extrapolate things from it and create a scenario that cannot be substantiated on the basis of verifiable fact. So okay. here I, I just looked up. OK, so they came with the link. Here we go. It, it's basically a, an adopted gay couple charged with sodomizing their adopted sons. Yes. Who also pimped them out to local men and send videos for them raping the boys. It's a horror. Is a yes. it's a wealthy couple sorted lifestyle revealed in John jaw dropping courts. This is uh, Zulak Zachary Zulak and his husband William are in jail for sex abuse. This is the children that they adopted yes. yep. and they pimped them out. So I guess the question is, Jacob, it is a true story. Uh, should we pray for them? This is evil. Should we pray for people like this? You know, there's a time in Jeremiah where God says, don't even pray for these people. Mm. The, the possibility of people like that being saved is 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 theoretical, but, but it is very, very, very unlikely mm. that people like that will not go to hell. Yeah. God yeah, gives them true. over. We're told in Romans 1 that God gives them over. If God has given somebody over, there's nothing we can do for them except pray for them. But it's almost once God has given somebody over, they have an express ticket from hell and God paid for it. Mm. Yeah, I, th this is quite an amazing story. I didn't know anything about it. Um, but there have been other cases like that where adopted children have been molested, both heterosexually and homosexually. But they pimped them out, Jacob. They literally pimped them out to other men. And sure. some videos of them being raped. This, this is this is disgusting. This is this is. Of course, is, it is. It's evil. Yeah. Besides if, prayer, how can we eliminate or refute alphabet agencies as as a sovereign nation if we're still a nation after the DNA union? Yeah. Well, as we've said many times, democracy no longer truly exists. Jacob, I gotta ask you a personal because this is my. Does the Constitution even matter now? I mean, is, is it is it a is, is it a? I mean, I know we say it's just, it's, it's it's there, but is it really even functional anymore? Is is it even in the people's minds? Rather than thought? security profile Muslims, most of whom have no business being in the country. Okay, every time you go through airport security, your constitutional rights are violated. 
Every time you go through airport security, you are being searched without warrant. It, it, it simply so as not to offend Muslims. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who should have been let in to begin with because we don't know which ones are radical and which ones aren't. And there's no way to know for the most part because the religion allows permissible lying. Um, secondly, um, Second Amendment. This new law in, is in other ways completely unconstitutional. Completely unconstitutional. Yeah. Do you look at what's that, happening with the, with the protesters of January 6th. Yeah. Okay, 100%. they take it only for being there, not the yeah. people went to the Capitol, only for being there. They're put on an index and they're unable to open bank accounts. You've got people being held without bail. The Constitution is being nullified, negated by these people. They're criminals. They're enemies of the Constitution they swore to uphold. Mm -hmm. Jacob, Jacob's, I, I, Jacob's, go ahead, go ahead, Jacob's go ahead. point. Uh, Look at look at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said that New York cannot make it unreasonable to get a concealed carry license. Hmm. You and I live in California. You try to apply to get a concealed carry in this state and tell me when you get it, because I'm going to guarantee you're not going to get it anytime soon. Oh, man. Only criminals see in California, New York, only criminals and drug dealers and gang members are allowed to have weapons. Honest citizens are not allowed the right to defend themselves. Yeah. Jacob, I, I, this is a personal question, too. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to take the time, but it, it raised up something. I had a uh, someone that wasn't a friend, but just brought up the point that, oh, you guys make a big deal out of the First and Second Amendment. Obviously, he comes from a liberal Marxist view. And uh, he says those weren't even originally the first two amendments. They were they were raised up to be the first and two amendments, but there were other things that the that the, uh, the, 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 the 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 basically the founding fathers had in mind before they put in free speech and 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 the Second Amendment. I don't know if that history is true. I don't know if you can enlighten. I think it. the press they originally confused. Oh, I think the press is a bit confused. You had the Constitution with its preamble. Okay, you had that. Yeah. But the first 10 amendments were called the Bill of Rights. Right. Those were a Part B. <laughs> yes. An adjunct to Part A. That that yeah. that is how it unfold historically unfolded constitutionally. I, were there I, I, were, I, were there other amendments that were that they saw more important than the first two? No. The, the ten amendments are called the Bill of Rights. All of yeah. those things were fundamental. Congress will not make any law concerning the establishment of religion, or freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of right to bear arms. Those 10 were seen as absolutely essential to the survival and promulgation of constitutional democracy. Okay. They were called yeah, okay. the Bill of Rights. They didn't see, yeah. okay, they were called amendments, but they were seen as a Bill of Rights. Yeah. And, and it may be, you know, you're right, it might be confusing. Other amendments begin with the 11th. Yeah, I, I guess there was one about like limitation on Congress uh, and 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 um, Congress how many years they can serve and, and things like that. That didn't get onto the bill. Of yeah, right. term limit like, should have gone on. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We should not have a I, we should not have a political class. Yeah, and, and, and it's fundamental. I think first and second amendment, you know, the right to defend yourself, and obviously right to free speech, right to assemble, right to religion. Those were fundamentals that they saw. That so sorry about the delay. Let's continue. What did Jesus mean when he proclaimed in John eight fifty six about Abraham rejoicing to see my day and saw it, and he was glad. The patriarchs, <laughs> much like Moses and the prophets, but the patriarchs more so only had a dim view. In Genesis 12, 1 to 5, God gave Abraham five promises. Abraham did not see the day when through him all the tribes, all the peoples of the earth to be blessed. He did not see that. He only knew God promised it would happen. Okay? <clears throat> that was all. Abraham did not see um, the, the full control of the land. Uh, that would happen at a later day. But above all, it was the seed of Abraham. These promises would come about ultimately through the seed of Abraham, which is the Messiah. 
He had God's promise it was going to happen, but he did not see it in his biological lifetime. He will, however, see it in the millennial reign of Christ. Mm. That's what it means. Amen. If the primitive church sold their belongings, obvious reasons which Jacob has explained, when should we do the same? When the Holy Spirit leads you in response to the need of the time. Amen. Jacob, do you think Yuval Harari looks like a false prophet rising out of the land and Vladimir Zelensky like the bees coming out of the sea? I think they both have an antichrist spirit, particularly Harari. Yeah. Will the mark of the beast be visible to the naked eye as, the, as in the Greek word epi, upon? Not necessarily visible. It could just simply be a subcutaneous implantation that's not visible. Okay. Are both Putin and Zelensky both in bad I'm not saying it won't be. I'm just saying from the text, it does not mandatorily have to be. Okay. So epi upon. Epi means around. Around. It could okay. be upon. It can be around. Okay. But whether or not it's visible to the naked eye is something else. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for that question. Uh, and of course, Jacob, thank you for that answer. Are both Putin and Zelensky both in bad health coming from those who are close to them? So there have been reports that Zelensky and Putin are, are obviously Putin's a lot older, but they're both in bad health. These things are always rumored. It is for sure that the CIA and the American State Department maintain profiles on various world leaders. And they have forensic physicians look at film footage and photographs recent of the world leaders who they're observing or looking at or concerned with. And they get all the green, all the information they can about their medical history and their family medical history. Mm. And they construct a profile. There's a team of physicians who work for the CIA and the Pentagon, particularly the CIA and the State Department. Who, who are forensic diagnosticians. They collect all the data they can on the medical history, the family medical history, and they look at any kind of photographic or film footage that they have, the more recent, the better, to try to construct a a profile, a health profile on, on these world leaders. That, that And that's been done for decades. That's been done since at least the 1950s. I remember when they were doing that to Castro. When they were doing that to they Castro. Like Castro, yes. Yeah, absolutely. The British intelligence. Um, British intelligence began doing it with Hitler. Interesting. Although I think they're a way off the mark. What do you think about theonomy, which is being propagated by certain sex, uh, certain segments of evangelicals? Theonomy. Again, he warned against kingdom now theology, dominionism, theonomic reconstructionism, reconstructionist Calvinism. We've warned about these things. I've been wondering about these things since the 1990s. Jacob, just for everybody to know, what is theonomy? Theonomy believes that the Deuteronomic legislation or something like it was not just for national Israel. The church has a mandate to conquer the world for Christ before he comes and use the scripture as a body of, of juridical and civil law, and mm -hmm. constitutional law, and implement it before Christ comes. And then when the church has conquered the world for Christ, then he returns. They ba it's Basically, it's related to replacement theology. It takes something that was indeed correct for Old Testament Israel and misapplies it to the mandate that God gave the church. What there really is, the theological term would be over-realized eschatology, over-realized eschatology. What will indeed take place during the millennial reign of Christ where you will have a biblical, the Bible will be the Constitution. Bible will be the Constitution, okay? Um, the Word of God will be the Constitution, and, and, and the law will be based on the law, will be the law of God. What will actually be the reality of the millennial reign of Christ, they tried to make that now, before yeah. the reign of Christ, yes. <laughs> yeah, Instead absolutely. of the Lord of glory uh, crushing Satan under your feet, we have to do it. Yeah, um, this was the thinking of the Kansas City false prophets to a degree of Mike Bickle. It was certainly the restorationists in England. That thinking permeates much of the new apostolic reformation. Its first basis was obviously the, the medieval papacy, hmm. Roman Church of the Middle Ages, and then 
obviously Calvin's Geneva, Zwingli, Zurich, things like that in the Reformation. And mm. up, up Cromwell's England would be another example. Yeah. Of gotcha. Puritan Massachusetts would be another example. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I remember in uh, what was it, Y2K? It was a yes. big influx of that, that yes. was coming. That was coming. Uh, Jacob, the WEF is licking the boots of China. Do you think China will have an unexpected surprise for the other evil that WEF is uh, in the future? I don't understand the question. If if so, the WEF is licking the boots of China. Yes. Right? Do you think China will have an unexpected surprise for the other evil, the WEF, I guess, will be will be in the future? So is, is China going to get the rug pulled under them, basically, by the WEF? All the nations, all the nations will be plunged into a sta precarious state of fear and anxiety, none of them knowing the way out. Hmm. It is in this chaos, Antichrist will get power. Yeah. And all nations will have to. That's right. Yeah. Come under his, uh, well, not everyone. Daniel 11 talks about a few. Yeah, of that. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. correct. And speaking of that, any ideas who the kings of the East will be? Or can you speculate? There are those who argue it was the countries of Soviet Central Asia, such as Kazakhstan. Others have argued it is seen China. Others. Mm -hmm. um, a comprehensive view of that <coughs> could be anything from Babylon and Assyria <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the way to the Pacific Ocean to Genghis Khan. Let's remember that the Mongol invasions, the Golden War that was stopped by Russia, the Mongols almost conquered everything from the Pacific to the Atlantic. Yeah. Almost. So they were not really quite, but they were stopped by, in Russia. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the Napoleon defeated the Mamelukes. They, they were descendants of the Mongols. Um, it's happened before. East Invasions from the East have happened before. The Roman, to the Romans, it was the Parthians, that is the Persians. That was the yeah. East invasion that they feared. Okay. Um, Napoleon said, let China sleep. When China awakes, let the world tremble. Napoleon, mm -hmm. oh, one day it will be China. Okay. Certainly in the late Middle Ages, they thought it was going to, that in the Middle Ages, they thought it was going to be the Mongols. The Mongols. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, it's happened multiple times. Uh, which one ultimately it will be? There are arguments to say it could be the Islamic countries of Central Asia. Because hmm. of the hatred of Israel and so forth. Interesting. But that would be Pakistan. Everything Pakistan, Bangladesh, not inconceivably, but certainly Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, those kinds of countries. Afghanistan. How could, a, how could a Russian missile that was designed to sink aircraft carriers ended up wiping out a Ukraine apartment complex Killing over 20 and over 70 wounded. Ship to ship missiles have been used terrestrially before. Hmm. Um, they've also launched from submarines and from, from, from surface ships attacking terrestrial targets. It, it, it's happened, it, it's happened before. What I would question is why are the Russians using these weapons this exactly. way? Exactly. Yeah. They are obviously running out of surface to surface missiles. So they're having to resort of ship to shore missiles or ship to ship missiles. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Some, some some naval weapons, naval projectiles could not be used to attack terrestrial targets. Exocet missiles wouldn't work to hit something on the land, for instance, or a torpedo, obviously. Yeah. Jacob, Jesus said, no, no one will know the day or the hour. However, by 2030, they say, I will imagine the WF, multiple times that they're planning a massive coal cool of humanity. Could 2023 be the start of the last seven years? It could, but you can't be dogmatic about it. Okay. 
It'll be st- definitely speculation because we, yeah. we See, look, assume 2030. Put the, emphasis, yeah. put the emphasis where the scriptures do. Okay? You won't Amen. know the day or the hour. But we do know it will be very, very shortly. Fasten your seatbelts shortly. True imminency. After the abomination of desolation is set up in the temple and after the faithful believers can decisively and definitively on the basis of scripture count the number of the beast mm. and know what it is. And there'll be many people saying it's this, it's that. No, the faithful church will have to know the exact correct understanding of 666. Those Amen. two things are what we need to be looking at, not date fixing. Very good, Jacob. Stick to the Bible. Stick to Scripture. Amen. Stick what it says. It'll save you. Uh, Jacob, one more. Could the three kings mentioned in Daniel 7 be America, Canada, and Mexico, or am I way off? What the, those nations, America, Canada, and Mexico, were not known when the Scripture was written. It is, to say the least, hyper-speculative. You shouldn't get into toying with those kinds of speculations. <laughs> There'll be a lot of that, and 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 we yeah. always warn about just 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 yeah. You know, Anglicanism was based on that kind of nonsense. They mm. were saying that 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 Gog and Magog, meant Connor was going to be invaded from the north by Russia. Don't get into that. Yeah, there's been plenty of that throughout the Christian yes. history. Right? Yes. Yeah, plenty of that, only for people to have um, you know egg on their face. I suppose that's correct. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, do the seven heads of the beast in Revelation symbolize the empires, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and Rome revived? If not, if that's not it, what do they symbolize? It is a very, it is a question I could not answer without doing a Bible study on the subject. And I'm not 100% persuaded myself as yet. But what I do know is the good place to begin is where Irenaeus and the early Christians said that John taught that it would involve Libya, and it would involve Egypt. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. And uh, I, I guess that's what we call the book of Revelation, right? Because it's yes. something more to be yes. revealed to us. Thank you so much, everyone, for sending your questions. Magnificent, wonderful questions, as always. And uh, Jacob, you're off the hot seat. Magnificent, always precise. Praise Thank you so Lord much for that. And um, this will be concluding catching up. We'll be jumping over out of YouTube, out of Facebook, into our, well, our main platform, Morial.tv, MorialTV.org. Uh, the subsequent ones will be like Vimeo and Telegram, Rumble, yes. of course. Let me just Rumble. urge our viewers, our viewers, you know, we have Morial TV, but we have Morial.tv, we have MorialTV.org, we have RTN, we have Telegram, we have Rumble. Please watch us on some other platform other than YouTube. We only want YouTube to be there as a feeder to direct people to a, another platform where there's more freedom <laughs> and less susceptibility to censoring by the powers that be. Thank you for watching more Real TV, but please don't watch it on YouTube. Please go to one of the alternatives. More Real well dot tv morial tv dot yeah. org rtn telegram rumble something but don't watch us on youtube watch us elsewhere well backstage you can't watch on youtube That's or right. on facebook so um too bad even if you wanted to watch it on youtube you got to get out of there That's come it. over to morial tv come over to rumble come over to the ones jacob talked about and uh we're going to be watching some videos some interesting videos that we couldn't play on youtube because of the tech overlords that don't like what jacob has to say so come over we'll sign off get to rumble get to the other platforms moral.tv we'll see you there in a few seconds once jay gives us a thumbs up we'll be right into backstage backstage live